which is www.andersontownship.org. If you click on the government tab at the top of the page and then trustees agenda on the right and click on today's date, you'll be able to access the agenda. I will note that there are some agenda changes that uh, we will present to the board a little bit later. A few things have been removed. The board will accept comments during public forum, which appears later in the agenda. But until such time, we ask that all participants mute their phones so that we reduce any out, uh, background noise and only unmute if you are speaking. If you're going to speak, it's also very helpful if you use the handset, if you're calling in by phone, rather than using the speaker feature, which can sometimes cause some, some issues as some of you may have heard already. At each of our board meetings, we encourage uh, those that are in attendance to sign a sheet indicating they are attending the meeting. Uh, since we're doing this virtually, if you would like to electronically sign in, you may do so by sending an email to Molly Moorfield. Her address is M-O-H-R-F-I-E-L-D at andersontownship.org, or you can um, speak your name during the public forum if you intend to speak, and we'll record it that way as well. Mr. Siebig already announced the elected officials and staff that are joining us at this time. Um, each of us will do our best to remember to state our name before speaking as we move through the meeting, and there will be other staff members that will join the meeting after exec session. At this point, I would now turn over the proceedings to Trustee Chair Josh Burke. Thank you, Vicki. Good evening, everyone. At this time, I'd like to move to retire to executive session to consider the appointment of a public employee or official as permitted by the Ohio Revised Code, Section 121.22G1, and to consider confidential information of an applicant for economic development assistance involving public infrastructure improvements as permitted by the Ohio Revised Code, Section 121.22G8. The executive session being deemed necessary to protect the interests of the applicant and the possible investment or expenditure of public funds in connection with the economic development project. So moved. Second. Per Mr. Pappas, my name is Ken Dietz. Mr. Pappas? Yes. Mr. Stone? Yes. Mr. Girth? Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Back at 530.
Yep. I think we're good to go. Thanks for joining the August 20th meeting of the Board of Anderson Township Trustees. If you could please mute your phone, it would be appreciated. We will have an opportunity for a public forum here momentarily, but if you could please mute your phone for the time being, it would be appreciated. Yep. The board resumes Thank you. the meeting. Good evening. This is Vicki Earhart, the Anderson Township Administrator. Welcome to the August 20th meeting of the Board of Anderson Township Trustees. Due to the declared state of emergency surrounding the COVID-19 pandemic, this meeting is being convened telephonically. The agenda for today's meeting is available on our website, which is andersontownship.org. You click on the government tab at the top of the page, then trustees agenda, followed by today's date, you'll be able to view the agenda. I will note there are several changes to that agenda. That was a draft we put up earlier and we'll address those here shortly. The board is going to accept comments during public forum, which appears later in the agenda. As Mr. Siever said, we ask that everyone mute their phones and only unmute if speaking. This helps to reduce any background noise. We also ask that if you are speaking, that you use the handset on your phone if you're calling in, uh, rather than the speaker feature that also helps to eliminate background noise. At each of our board meetings, we encourage those that are in attendance to sign in. We typically have a sign in sheet, but as we are doing this telephonically, you may either announce your name during public forum if you intend to speak, or if you do not wish to speak this evening, you can sign in electronically by sending an email to Molly Moorfield. Her email address is m m o h r f i e l d at andersontownship.org. That way we can record your attendance. Before the meeting, if it resumes, I'd like to identify the elected officials that are participating in this meeting, including Trustee Chair Josh Gerth, Trustee Vice Chair Dee Stone, Trustee Andrew Pappas, and Fiscal Officer Ken Deeds. In addition, we have quite a few staff members that are joining us, Assistant Administrator for Human Resources, Suzanne Parker, Assistant Administrator for Operations, Steve Stevers, our Law Director, Margaret Comey, Planning and Zoning Director Paul Drury, as well as Planners PJ Ginty and Sarah Donovan, Hamilton County Sheriff Lieutenant Dan McElroy, Fire Chief Rick Martin, Public Works Director Eric Luganbuehl, Fiscal Office Manager Debbie Hucker, and Administrative Assistant Molly Moorfield, who is recording this meeting, we will be preparing minutes for the board's review at a later date. I ask that each of the staff members remember to state your name before speaking so those that are joining us via phone can follow along. We thank you for joining us and appreciate your patience and understanding during these unprecedented times. I will now turn the proceedings over to Trustee Chair Josh Gert. Thank you, Vicki. Good evening, everyone. And with that, I move to return to open session. Second. Mr. Pappas. Mr. Pappas? Yes. Mrs. Stone? Yes. Mr. Gert? Yes. Thank you. Everyone will join us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I move to adopt tonight's agenda with modifications. Second. Mr. Pappas? Mr. Pappas? Yes. Yes. Mr. Stone? Yes. 
Mr. Gerth? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Kicking off tonight, we have a couple of uh, presentations. First up is the Tree Awards. So, PG, I think that's you. Thank you, Mr. Gerth. And then um, I believe the presentation was on Steve's screen. There we go. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, so this is a presentation for the uh, 2020 Great Tree Awards. Um, this is a program that the Tree Committee has um, has put together uh, for the past, I believe this is our ninth year doing this, uh, this award program. Um, so I'd be happy to announce the winners. Uh, Steve, if you want to go to the next slide. So there are three different uh, categories that we um, present award, that the Tree Committee presents awards to. Uh, shade tree, ornamental tree, and then um, shade tree, ornamental tree, and I forget the third one, but um, if you want to go to the next one, the shade tree is the Burr Oak at 7249 Lawyer Road. And the ornamental tree is at 919 Rose Tree Lane. Evergreen, that's the third one, the evergreen tree. And this is actually located at the township's property on uh, the corner of Clough Pike and Hunley Road. Um, so I'm not sure if we have any of the winners on the line tonight, um, but they do receive a sign um, that we can go put in front of the tree um, that designates it as a great tree award for uh, 2020. Thanks, PJ. Thank you, PJ. Work with you on that committee, and uh, I'd like to thank everybody on that committee for all their hard work. They, uh, we have some great people on that committee, and uh, they put a lot of thought and effort into all those awards, and uh, all of our meetings are very well attended and very well discussed. Well said. Thank you. Up next, I think, is Sarah for the uh, 2020 Beautification Awards. Beautification Awards are a We Thrive Anderson initiative. This year, we revamped the program to have two categories, the first being Outstanding Residential. Dave, if you can go to the next slide for me. And our winner for Outstanding Residential is 7215 Royal Green Drive. Our second category is Outstanding Commercial Properties. And our winner for that, if you'll go to the next slide, is Anthology of Anderson Township. So similar to the Great Tree Awards, the beautification winners also get a yard sign to proudly display on their property. And we'll be delivering those tomorrow. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks. Again, thank you to the We Thrive Committee for their work and voting and doing what they do on this. I appreciate it. Yes, agreed. Um, <clears throat> This is, uh, this is an important award. I think um, we really appreciate those who go above and beyond, both with their homes and their businesses, to make our township look better. So this is, uh, this is great. Both of those well-deserved. Any other presentations and awards? I don't think there are, so... If anybody on here that are any the homeowners, the businesses, or any of the tree award recipients, you're welcome to say a few things as we move here into public forum. Uh, this is the time when individuals who wish to address the board can do so. so we ask you to limit your comments, please, to three minutes. And uh, hopefully this goes okay. Last time we may have had some technical difficulties, but we're going to Leave it open for a few minutes to make sure that anybody that wants to speak can do so. So at this time, 
Anyone who would like to speak may do so. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Outstanding. My name is Todd Taylor. I'm at 2359 Fairhill Boulevard in the township. And I've got a question that I've been trying to get heard, and I'd like to direct it to D. Stone. Um, and I just wanted to ask, did you author the Remove the Redskin resolution that was used um, in the Forest Hill School District? And um, do you think that the second question is, is it ethical for a trustee to be involved in school business like the Redskin issue? Could D hear me? Mr. Taylor, our public comments are not, it's not a back and forth discussion. If you have a comment to make, you're welcome to make your comment, but we don't engage in back and forth discussion during this time of our meeting. So we'll just leave it at that. Okay, my apologies. Then um, I'll just try to email you again and perhaps I'll get an answer. Thank you for your time. Anyone that would like to address the board? Mr. Gerth, this is uh, Steve Sievers. I'm trying to unmute everyone. So if somebody perhaps did not get the chance or I've muted you accidentally, you can always email us and we can try to get you connected here later in the meeting um, or call 688-8604 and we'll try to figure out a way to get you connected here tonight. Uh, my email address is also on the website under today's meeting. You can email me and we'll do our best to get you connected if we've missed you here during public forum. I, I think I did unmute everyone and tried to remute, but if, again, if you were missed, um, we want to try to make sure that you're still heard in some manner, so we'll, we'll figure that out. But again, the contact information to do so is on the calendar listing on today's uh, on the website, andersontownship.org. If you go to the meeting link, you'll see my phone number and email address at the bottom of that. We will leave it open for a minute in case someone doesn't want to talk. One more time. This uh, this is our public forum session. So anyone that would like to address the board may do so at this time. Hearing nothing, we will move on to trustee comments. Do you, Andrew, anything you'd like to add? Uh, actually, I have a comment just because it was the governor's office announced today that um, senior centers may be opening. They're going to maybe uh, uh, um, release some guidelines soon. So just it, it came out as the senior center advisory committee was meeting. So just you know, we will be sending something out soon. I mean, there's there's no guarantees on any of that, but I just wanted people to know that we're aware of that announcement 
the Senior Center Advisory Committee and staff will be looking at when's the safest way, and we've already been work, working on steps to open safely when and if we do open, but that's all going to be taken under advisement. So I just want to people to know that we're looking at, so we want to open safely in the best interest of our community. So I just want people to know that, that we're aware that that announcement has been made, so. Thank you. Andrew? That's good news, Dee. Um, I'd like to just say that uh, I think it's a fantastic the way our staff has, has continued to um, adapt to this uh, COVID situation and the uh, meetings are getting better. And I, I was thinking today on some phone calls that we had, I was talking to Vicki, how really seamless it's been for the residents. Our construction projects have gone on. Um, we've managed to keep the township functioning um, relatively. I know there's been some hiccups and I know we have like the senior center closed and other things that are affecting some of our residents. But I am just so impressed with the job our staff does because I've seen other parts of the country where they're basically shut down still and that's not happening here in Anderson. We're getting public works is getting things fixed. Um, we're, 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 we're proceeding on as normally as we can. And I just like to, you know, always acknowledge the job our staff does to work around this otherwise difficult situation. So thank you. you. You make our township look good. You do good work and we really do appreciate it and the job that you do. Well said. And um, the only thing I have to add is something that, of course, will never get reported in the inquiry or anything else is while they're um, writing and everyone is complaining about what's going on at all levels of government, I just want to remind anyone who's on this call that there will be no tax levy for Anderson Township residents this fall. Is anyone who's been paying attention, and I know there's many out there who have been seeing articles and information we've been putting out for about a year regarding our public uh, works fund specifically. Uh, thanks in part to several people on this call, we were able to get some important legislation passed at the state level and uh, utilize some restricted funds that we now have access to and are now able to stave off that levy. So this is great news. This is saving average residents in the township hundreds of dollars on their real estate taxes. And again, I, uh, I wanna thank everybody who was involved because this was, this is a great example of government actually working for the people. And unfortunately, it's not gonna get reported, um, but I'm gonna do everything I can to make sure that people understand what an achievement this was. And, the people who've helped should be uh, should be commended. So thank you to everyone who helped. Well, you are one of those people, Mr. Gerd, so thank you for your efforts on this. Thank you. Okay, with that, we're moving into the fiscal officer report. Ken Dietz. Thank you. Uh, financial reports are coming in. I was in touch with the uh, county treasurer's office and we're expecting our revenues to be slightly changed because of the environment and the, uh, the nature of people that are paying tax bills, but nothing significant. Um, re revenues are pretty much steady now. The uh, expenditures are lower than uh, expect it, but that can change at any time because we do have some encumbrances. We have no appropriation changes for tonight, but I would like to tell everyone that uh, we just went through an audit and uh, the auditors have completed uh, their reports that we they will be sending us a final report. Uh, nothing significant and we have waived our ability to have a final exit report, a formal exit report, I should say, with the uh, with the state auditors. And when that report is finished, we will be sending it out to the trustees and administration and everybody. So um, it was a long process because of uh, 
COVID-19. The auditors had a hard time uh, dealing with our office because people were not available to come in. But uh, it, and it lasted probably a month more than it should have, but it's over now. And we will be, be getting final reports in the next uh, week or so. So it uh, looks like it went fairly well. And uh, we do have some minutes to, uh, are there any questions on that? No, but I just want to acknowledge your work, Debbie's work, uh, Nancy's work in the fiscal office department. We know these audits don't, uh, I mean, we know that they're, they're, they can be very trying as you get ready and prepared for them. So thanks for everything you guys do. What I would say is the burden did fall on Debbie and Nancy, but they were trying to get into the office uh, to accommodate the state examiners. I think they did a tremendous job and we had administration helping us. Um, auditors were fairly uh, attentive to what our needs were, but it was very difficult to work not having them in our offices physically, but it, it did work out. So, and like I said, Josh, or like you said, thank you to everybody. We do have minutes to approve. With that, uh, I'm going to approve the minutes of May 29th, 2020, June 4th, 2020, June 9th, 2020, and June 18th, 2020. Second. Yes. Joe? Yes. Mr. Gerth? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I do not believe we have a law director report, so moving into planning and zoning, Paul Drury. Good evening. Um, this is Paul from Planning and Zoning. The first item under our agenda is the 2021 Comprehensive Plan Update. Um, if you can believe it, our last plan, since it was adopted in 2016, it's time for our five-year update. Uh, we have prepared a, an RFP request for proposals to release that um, soon. This will be a challenging time to update our comp plan, obviously. So the items that we will be looking for in a consultant, the, the normal things, but flexibility in their schedule and how they will handle public engagement. Um, there was discussion of possibly postponing our update, but we know how important the comprehensive plan is in the township, how often we use it as a tool, you know, not only staff, but the elected officials use it for making planning uh, and decisions throughout the township. So. We have prepared an RFP. Um, this was budgeted to start this year. It is in the 2020 budget. As far as the time frame, if you agree to release the RFP, we would like to release it right away. We would receive proposals for about 30 days, 30 plus days until mid to late September. The hope would have to have a consultant on board late September, early October, and then begin the process from there. Again, the process, we will need to be flexible on how this update is conducted versus the past updates, uh, but we do feel it's important to move forward. With all of our updates, the process is generally about nine months uh, to develop the draft plan. The adoption process takes about three months. So on this time schedule, um, if we stay on, on schedule, the plan will be updated at the end of 2021. So there is a motion before you for your consideration. I move to release the request proposals for the 2021 comprehensive plan update process in order to select the consultant to complete the plan update. The budget to not exceed $100,000. Second. Mr. Travis? Yes. Mrs. Stone? Mrs. Stone? Yes. Mr. Gerd? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I did neglect to say that for this go around with this update, and then we'll be taking the lead with the project and PJ Genty will be helping her um, lead the project and managing the consultant. So, um, our next item on the agenda is the Patterson Road sidewalk drainage study. As we discussed a couple of months back, during the right-of-way acquisition component of this grant, 
it became evident that drainage uh, was a critical issue in this corridor. And as you can see on our map, um, when anyone who's driven down Patterson realizes there's a steep grade going down the hill and it collects from two different creeks and they somewhat merge in the middle of our project area. The drainage issue is, uh, is, is current. It's, it's nothing new um, and it generally is a flash flooding event that water may um, get onto the roadway during a flash flooding event. It rarely gets into homes. Uh, but it does impact some driveways in the area. So during our initial study and talking with um, residents, the concern was that our sidewalk project would not make the issue worse and were there opportunities to help the situation. Um, this is a long standing situation, so it's nothing that we can completely correct with our project, but we are trying to ensure our project does not make the situation worse. And if there are um, additional projects that we can do during the sidewalk construction, you know, what can we do to possibly help help the situation and make it better? So we asked our consultant Kleingers to do an initial, just very um, basic drainage study to look at the culvert pipes along the area. And during that very basic look, um, it was determined this is probably not going to be the solution to work on the culverts because it may make the situation worse downstream. So we've asked them to take another look at possibly doing a detention basin upstream and collecting some of that water um, before it even gets into the corridor. So we have a motion before you. One is to finish the initial drainage study that looked at the culverts. And the second is to look at the possibility of adding a detention area um, further store, south, closer to Beachmont, that would help collect um, the stormwater before even getting into the, the area. So I'll be happy to answer any questions on this. It's been a very complicated sidewalk project, and um, we hope that this will definitely keep the project on track uh, and, and help resolve some of the residents' concerns during the right-of-way acquisition component. Barring any questions, I move to enter into a contract with Kleinders Group to complete a preliminary drainage study to explore the feasibility of upsizing culverts in the project area and complete a study to construct a detention basin outside the project area for a total amount not to exceed 13500 using funds available in the Anderson Trails TIF budget, allowing the township to move forward with the necessary next steps to advance the sidewalk project, which could begin construction in late 2021. Second. Mr. Pappas? Yes. Mr. Stone? Yes. Mr. Gert? Yes. Thank you. Thank, thank you for your support on that project. Um, and that was all we had, unless you had any questions. Thank you, Paul. Chair support, Lieutenant McElroy, anything? Report tonight. Thank you. So we'll move into our Public Works Department report with Eric Lingenbuehl. And tonight, for all of you listening, is a very exciting night. This is our annual uh, confirmation of the lighting districts around the township, so get ready for some excitement. Eric, take it away. <laughs> Thanks, Josh. It's Eric from Public Works. Uh, first up tonight we have is our Copper Glow Culver Pipe Project. Um, on August 11th, Public Works opened, uh, received an open bid for the Copper Glow Culver Pipe Project. The published engineer's estimate for the total of work was $150,000 even. The department reviewed all the bids for content and completeness and to establish the most responsive bidder. Based on this, I'd like to recommend awarding the project to ProShot Pro Concrete Incorporated in the amount of $147,600 even. And there's also a 10% contingency on top of that of $14,760 even for uh, any unforeseen conditions outside the uh, original scope of work. And that's before you tonight for your consideration. I move that the board hereby accepts the bid of 147600 from ProShot Concrete, Inc., deemed to be the most responsive and responsible bidder 
for the Copper Glow Court culvert type project in accordance with the bid plans and specifications together with a 10% contingency for a maximum appropriation of 162,360 uh, in grant and road and bridge funds. Further, this board hereby authorizes and directs the township administrator to give timely notice of award to the contractor and after consultation with the law director to enter into contract with ProShot Concrete Inc. in accordance with its bid acceptance bid for the Copper Glow Court Convert Pipe Project. Second. Mr. Pappas? Yes. Mrs. Stone? Yes. Mr. Gertz? Yes. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. The next up is the lighting district renewal. And as the board is aware, every September the lighting districts come up for renewal. And we are asking your approval of the following nine lighting districts, which were up for, up for renewal in 2020. I have those before you. All right, D. I will start. It's always a lot of fun. I move to adopt a resolution awarding contract and confirming assessments for landings of Anderson. Phase one lighting district pursuant to revised code sections 9.30, 515.081, 515.11, and 515.08. Second. Mr. Bathurst? Yes. Mr. Stone? Yes. Mr. Gers? Since that is where I live, I will abstain. Thank you. Are we moving on? You're on, D. Okay. Yep. I move to award contract and confirming assessments for Ash Road Lighting District pursuant to revised code sections 9.3.015.081.5.5.1 and 515.08. Second. Mr. Pappas? Yes. Mrs. Stone? Yes. Mr. Gerth? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Gerth, you can jump in at any time. Uh, I realize that your microphone might be broken. Um, I, move, I move to adopt a resolution awarding contract and confirming assessments for Fox Trail Farms Lighting District pursuant to revised code sections 9.30, 515.081, 515.11, 515.08. Second. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Thank you. I move to award contract and confirming assessments for McIntosh Lighting District pursuant to revised code sections 9.30, 515.081, and 515.08. Second. Mr. Yes. Mr. Stone? Yes. Yes. Halfway Thank you. through. You gonna do any of them or are you just gonna let us do them all? I think you guys are doing an amazing job. It's very nice of you. I move to adopt a resolution awarding contract to confirming assessments for sanctuary at Ivy Hills, phase one lighting district, pursuant to revised code sections, 9.30, 515.081, 515.11, 515.08. Second. Mr. Pappas? Yes. Mr. Stone? Yes. Mr. Gerson? Yes. Thank you. I'm ready to adopt a resolution awarding contract and confirming assessments for St. James Park Lighting District pursuant to revised code sections 9.30, 5, 5 .1, 5 1, 5 1, 5 1, and 515.08. Second. Mr. Pappas? Yes. Mr. Stone? Yes. Mr. Gerson? Yes. What is that? Josh, could you stop that? Um, I move to adopt resolution awarding contract and confirming assessments for Woods at Coldstream Lighting District pursuant to revised code sections 9.30, 515.081, 515.11, 515.08. Second. Mr. Pappas? Yes. Mr. Stone? Yes. Mr. Gerd? Yes. Thank you. 
I move to adopt a resolution awarding contract and confirming assessment winds of Anderson phase two lighting district pursuant to revised code section 9.30, 515.081, 515.11, and 515.08. Second. Mr. Babbage? Yes. Mr. Stone? Yes. Mr. Gert? Yes. Thanks. <laughs> Josh, I really appreciate this. Um, I move to adopt a resolution awarding contract and confirming assessments for Winds of Anderson Phase 2 Lighting I District. Well, I think you did Phase 2. I think we got Phase 1. Did I skip one? You did. I'll do Phase 1 now, Lighting District. Pursuant to revised code sections, 9.30, 515.08, one one and five fifteen point oh eight. Second. Mr. Pappas? Yes. Mrs. Stone? Yes. Mr. Gert? Yes. Thanks. Sorry about the skipping one. We're done. Well done. Fire and rescue, Chief Martin. Fire department has no report tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Moving into Township Administration, Vicki Earhart. Mr. Stevens, um, first item. Uh, the first item on the agenda under administration is a small cell uh, design guidelines. And this is something that the board has been very involved with for several years. Um, this township took a lead back in 2017 in trying to get ahead of the curve on this topic and the board was very supportive of staff's efforts to help mitigate the uh, impact of these types of uh, equipment being located in the township. In March of 2018, after significant research and discussion, the board adopted some guidelines related to small cell um, site locations, of which there are now five in the township. Um, those have been very helpful in guiding us since that period of time. But uh, I think we're beginning to see the wave of this technology rolling out in our region. And that, because of that, our staff, and I'll appreciate the help here of uh, Planning and Zoning Director Paul Drury, Planner Paul, uh, PJ Ginty, and Public Works Director Eric Luganbuehl, particularly in working with us to update this, looking at some other communities and what they are doing as well to kind of follow the best practices. What you have before you is a modified set of guidelines, um, updating what we had been back in March in 18 with some new additions that we feel will help us as this technology has continued to roll out here in Anderson. If there are any questions on those, I'll be happy to answer those. Otherwise, we would appreciate the board's consideration of the motion in the packet. I move to adopt a resolution to authorize the amendment of resolution number 18031511 to update small microcell site design guidelines for Anderson Township right of ways in Hamilton County, Ohio. Second. Mr. Pappas? Yes. Mrs. Stone? Yes. Mr. Gerth? Yes. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. The last item that we have for the board and for the public today is, relates to the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, for those that are not familiar, the Ohio Public Health has created an advisory system that basically color codes the counties to help inform the public and business owners as what the status is in their particular area. Hamilton County uh, is at a level orange, uh, which, and I'll explain a little bit about that, but we were a red category a couple of weeks ago. We have been reduced to orange, which is a good thing. Orange means that there is a public emergency and a risk of increased exposure and spread of the contagion, and that the public should exercise a high degree of caution. That is below the red level, which is where we were again a few weeks ago, which uh, requires that people limit their activities to reduce the spread of the virus. So the governor credits mask wearing hand washing, and people just generally limiting their activities to the reduced number of coronavirus cases in our area. Um, we've been, Hamilton County itself has been quoted several times as a success story because people are wearing the masks uh, like Mr. Pappas there, who looks like Mr. Red to some degree. 
But at any rate, um, we are doing a good job. I appreciate staff and members of the public. When I go out to Kroger and other areas, I notice that people are wearing a mask and you should all know it is making a difference. Uh, Hamilton County right now, not including the city of Cincinnati, Norwood and Springdale, which each have their own health department. So the rest of the county, including Anderson Township, there are 5,594 cases, 549 hospitalizations and 172 deaths. Looking at that closer to home, and you can all view this information on Hamilton County Public Health's website, but in zip code 45255, there are 91 cases, 90 cases in 45230, and 77 cases in 45244. So um, again, thank you all for being conscientious, wearing your mask, hand washing, staying away, social distancing, it's all making an impact. As Mrs. Stone mentioned, we did learn today that the Anderson Senior Center and senior centers across the state will likely be able to open in the end of September. Uh, we don't know all the details and I, I caution everyone, we're, we're cautiously optimistic because things can change and very rapidly. Um, but we are looking at and staff have been doing an amazing job of looking at the precautions that need to be taken to reopen the senior center at some point. So we will communicate with the board and the public about that. Keeping in mind where we were and where things are, are so tentative moving forward, uh, we made the difficult decision to cancel some events this fall. For example, emergency services day and the trick or treat event that has been held up at the town center have been canceled for this year as have the Veterans Day celebration. Uh, we did consult with the American Legion Post 318 who has been heavily involved in that event. And for the safety of all involved, we decided to cancel those events this year. Um, other events are, are kind of tentative and we'll keep the public informed through our website. So unless the board has any questions, that's uh, the extent of our update today regarding COVID. I have a question. I have a question on what you uh, just said, uh, Vicki, on the the trick or treat. That's our event, correct? It it is a event that we do in conjunction with the Anderson Town Center. Years ago, we used to have the the trick or treat event here, the Jack Lantern Block at Anderson Center, and that has been shifted up to the Town Center. They held it last year. Uh, with limited support from the township, but that event is being canceled this year because of COVID. The other thing I should probably bring up at this point, um, usually we start getting calls in August about trick-or-treating in the township. I typically come to the board and ask you to set trick-or-treat hours in August or September. Uh, I am not doing that yet because we are waiting for guidance from Ohio Department of Health and the state is whether or not trick or treating could even take place this year. So once we get better guidance, I will return to the board with that request or at least inform you of where things are. Um, we're also working on updated revenue uh, and financial statistics, which we hope to have to the board at their September interim, as far as how the COVID pandemic has impacted our, our revenue from EMS billing to the gas tax to, to property taxes, um, working with Mr. Dietz, and we'll have an update for you in September. Vicki, if I could for just one second, um, get, go back to one thing that I forgot to mention during the comments, and I know that's a long way away, but it's COVID related. Um, school went back in this week, I believe, and I'd just like to remind our residents that we do have school zones to uh, observe that we've had the habit of not observing them for some time now. Um, buses are on the road. I've seen several. Um, let's make sure that everyone, please be safe out there. Um, school zones, slow it down. Buses, do not pass the school bus. Um, we've gotten out of our habits. Let's get back into them. Let's be safe. We don't need any, uh, we don't need any accidents because we've forgotten what to do in schools and around buses. Thank you, and that's a, a great reminder for everyone. Schools 
Uh, Forest Hills will start on August 27th. And um, so I know that there's there's a lot of uh, trepidation as far as COVID, not to mention, you know, the, the busing. You're, you're right. Students will be out there. Um, so we all need to be careful and make sure you stop at a stop sign at complete stop and uh, watch out for the kids. Agree. And I actually think there will probably uh, be more parents dropping off this year and, and perhaps more walkers because they're trying to people limit the number of people on the buses. So it's a good point, Andrew. People need to be aware there could be a lot more walkers, kids walking to school, and just pay attention. Thank you. Yeah, and, and I appreciate our staff is working. Uh, they've been closely aligned with the school district with that very issue to make sure that we can assist the school district in any way, shape, or form as far as getting uh, motorists in and out of school quickly and make sure that the children are safe in crosswalks. So I appreciate everything our staff have done with that effort. Mm -hmm. Thanks everyone. Anything else? Not this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Our next regular monthly board meeting will be September 17th, 2020. Hopefully we're hoping we may actually have a person at the Anderson Center. Before we adjourn, though, we do need to jump back into executive session. So I would move to retire to executive session, consider the appointment of a public employee or official as permitted by the Ohio Revised Code. Second. Mr. Pappas? Yes. Mrs. Stone? Yes. Mr. Gerth? Yes. Yes. Great meeting, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. leaving and getting a call again. That's correct, Ms. Stone. You can um, exit the okay. call. Okay. Thank you.
We're just waiting on uh, Andrew, right? Andrew, and I believe is Mr. Dietz rejoining us. Who's calling user 13? I believe that's Molly. Oh. So we've got Mr. Dietz. Um, I'm Molly. We do not need Mr. Pappas to adjourn, but I can go see if he is. That's okay. Let's just adjourn. We, if there's two of us here, I think we're fine, right? Yes, you are. Yeah. Okay, so I'll move to return to open session. Second. Mr. Pappas? Yes. Mrs. Stone? Yes. Mr. Girth? Yes. And uh, move to adjourn. Second. Mr. Pappas? Yes. Mr. Stone? Yes. Mr. Girth, I can hear him. Yes. Good evening. Bye-bye, everyone. Well, Andrew, you turned your...